I'll just kind of review this. These cards are from Make It With Mary Monday this week. I used um, the Tis the Seasons Designer Series paper. And what I did was I had the same size pieces of cardstock and DSP, but um, this was my original card sketch. And then when I made this one live, I used again, the same size um, cardstock and DSP and just came up with a completely different layout. So those were a lot of fun. So if you missed Make It With Mary Monday Facebook Live this week, you can go back and see it under the video section here and it will post to my blog very soon. Um, I believe it was last week I showed how to make the trifold shutter card and it was so much fun. I made another one after the live and I'll, I'll have to post this as well with some photos and things. But um, I made this one with um, the poinsettias on the front. I just think these are so elegant. And as I was getting ready to show this, I started thinking, wouldn't it be nice if I just had a little bit of Wink of Stella on some of these petals? You know, just to give it a little shimmer. But they're already so elegant. Just, I don't know if you can see the difference between that one and the others. But I thought, well, that's something fine. I just can never get enough of Wink of Stella. Super awesome. And this one too, like even on the some of the bells, how cute. Anyways, today I'm going to be showing you, oh, I have a couple of announcements. Um, verse uh, for in regards to the uh, stamp sale on Wednesday. Thank you to everybody who ordered from me. I have met my goal for the last quarter, so I am thrilled. I had a uh, little under a week to go, and I've met that goal, so I'm thrilled. Um, that includes receiving a bonus and in a couple of weeks, and so I have put that towards the purchase of a um, heavy duty paper cutter. So I ordered that yesterday. I'm super excited. As soon as it comes in, I'll show everybody what I got and what I did with that bonus since you helped me earn that, uh, helped me meet that last goal. In addition, my um, stamp and cut and emboss machine giveaway continues. That will be through September 30th. Anybody that makes a $50 or more purchase, Stampin' Up! purchase, um, not including shipping and tax, will have their name entered into the drawing for that um, free new Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. I shouldn't say free, I'm purchasing it, but it's a giveaway. Um, and that is for every $50 you order. Um, the second half of September. So there's still time to get in on that giveaway. Today I'm going to show you how to make this square easel card. It lays flat, will fit in our standard size envelopes, and then it just pops up like that. There's still room to write a message here inside. Um, you could even make this. I just glued this piece of DSP down but you could um, adhere it just on the sides and bottom and use it as a pocket for gift cards as well. So that's it. Um, and later when I post this to my blog next week, um, I found online that somebody had made a little insert that you can tuck in the envelope and it has a tiny little diagram and it tells the receiver of the card that this is an ESOL card and that basically this is how you stand it up with the little diagram. So I thought that was awesome and I'll be copying some of those for myself so I'll be sure and um, post it along with this on my blog next week so that you have that as well when you make and send the ESOL cards. And there's lots of variations on the ESOL cards so perhaps we'll do some of those in the future. Okay, so you're going to start with a card base that measures four and a quarter by eight and a half inches. Okay, four and a quarter by eight and a half inches. And then you, on the long side, you wanna score it at two inches 
and at four and a quarter. Alrighty, two inches and four and a quarter. And from there, you're just gonna fold it in half like you would a regular square card. But then you're going to fold on that next score line so it becomes like a little hill or mountain, a little peak for your card, okay? The next piece you'll need is a piece of cardstock that measures uh, four and a quarter inches by four and a quarter. Now there is a score line here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a tiny little score line near the edge. Ignore that. I had made a mistake on a different project and was just using up um, this so it didn't go to waste. And that score line gets covered up with my designer series paper. Although when I was designing this, um, made the first one and cut pieces for the second, I decided that's not really the piece I want for this second card because it is a little bit different than the first. So I'm going to cut this piece of designer series paper with the bats flying in the night sky. And I'm going to cut this four inches square. Thanks to those of you who have shared, I appreciate it so much. Oh yes, Pam, happy weekend. I'm, I'm ready for it, to be honest. It's been kind of a long week, a good week, but a long week. So I'm going to now adhere this four inch square of DSP to my four and a quarter inch square of cardstock. Okay, so this is what I have so far. I have previously cut a piece of four inch square basic gray. I know it's kind of kind of blah, but it's sort of a, a spooky Halloween-y card. So I'm using the blacks and the grays, but it's still a very fun card. I really didn't think I would like all this um, Magic in This Night designer series paper, but I have made loads of projects and am loving it. So if you haven't used it, be sure and check it out. Okay. Now, once I have that done, what I want to do is put adhesive on this front flap, the bottom front This is the piece that's going to create my easel. But before I make the easel part, I want to put this on. And that four inch square that, that has the DSP layered on it should fit exactly on your card front. But you only want to adhere it on the bottom portion. Only on that bottom portion. Because that's what creates the front of the easel. Okay, now I have a piece of one and a half inch by four inch designer series paper. I'm trying to decide what color do I, what side do I want? I think I'll go with that, the lacy spider webs. I wanted to show you on this one, your uh, rectangle at the bottom, you just wanna make sure it's the same width as that piece of layered cardstock but you can make it varying um, heights. So this one I cut four and a quarter. So it's got a little bit different look because it's got, it leaves that, makes that strip of basic gray cardstock in there. But this one I thought, I'm just gonna try it, a little bit different size. So it is one and a half inches high. Okay, so, so far this is what I have. This is what it looks like from the side, and here's the top. That's how it looks like from the top and then each side. All right, now 
when you make this part, basically whatever you put here needs to be up on dimensionals so that um, that is what holds that easel front in place, whatever's sitting on the easel, that's what holds it in place. So it stands nicely. So I went ahead and um, one thing I am going to do is cut a small strip of this black glitter paper. And it's going to be four inches by three quarters inches. And I just want it there just to add a little bit more interest. By the way, is this glitter paper incredible? First of all, it's a little bit thinner than glitter paper we've um, sold in the past. So it's easier to cut with the punches and the dies. Um, but none of the glitter comes off. This is amazing to me. So when I go shopping today for Andrea's birthday gift, which I have no clue what I'm getting my soon-to-be 29-year-old, um, I won't be wearing glitter all over my face and clothes and everything. So I love that. I'm just hoping we get more of this fabulous glitter paper in other colors. We also have um, a balmy blue glimmer paper right now. That's fabulous as well, as well. Lots of people are using it with the snowflake splendor suite. Okay, then I'm going to, um, I pulled out some of my black dimensionals, perfect for this project. Well, you know what, that could be a little pop of color right there. What do you think, should I do the pop of color? Or should I keep it with shades of black and gray? Somebody tell me what to do. Shades of black and gray or a pop of color with the little um, spiders. Any preferences? Boy, we have a small group today. People must be getting outside and enjoying the nice weather. Pam says a pop of color. Okay, you're the first one to respond, so I'm going with you. And remember this easel card, Funfold, will work with any colors and sweets and bundles, DSPs, anything you want to use. And then I'm also popping this up on dimensionals, be, again, because I want there to be that little platform. Can you see it from this angle? I want there to be that little raised platform to hold the easel front in place, just like that. Okay. And the next thing I want to do is, and we have some fun. I just pulled out some fun embellishments and I've used a couple on my first card. I've used the um, metallic mesh ribbon. I made a tiny bow of this black organdy ribbon. Actually, I was going to put a little black bow on my glitter cap, but that didn't happen that way. <laughs> it was, it just didn't, I don't know. It was too big. And um, the bigness didn't bother me, but it just kind of got lost in there. Um, and then some other fun embellishments for these Halloween cards would be the iridescent pearls, which I love, love, love. And I also pulled out the holiday rhinestones because I like this fall color in here. And that could work nicely on some of these Halloween cards as well. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to add some of these bats that I cut from the designer series paper. There is a die from the Halloween Magic dies that can actually be used to cut a large and a small bat out, um, many at the same time. But if you go back, you can um, even cut out more in the scraps. 
These little ones are so cute too. These are the only bats I like, though. I'm telling you, if I see bats out and about in the world, it's not a good thing. Not something I like. Now, I'm going to try something fun here with this metallic mesh ribbon. It's a little bit lower. Now it's okay if my bats go a little bit beyond the borders because this card is not as wide as we normally make them. And therefore the bats hanging over will not get crushed by the envelope. You know what I mean? When you tuck that envelope in, we've got some extra room there. All right, and then I'm gonna put another bat kind of over here. I just want this mesh ribbon to just kind of lift up off the card a little bit like that. I might have to um, put another, let me see, I might have to put another dimensional on here on this wing to help hold that because I want to scrunch it up a little bit. Multi-purpose glue would also work for this. And push it down really good because that little dimensional has a lot to hold. I'll put another large one up here. And then I'm going to fill in with my two bats. Okay, if I saw five bats in my yard, I'd probably, probably have a heart attack. Bats are not my thing. On one of the girls' school field trips, we did... Um, where do I want this one? Oh, maybe over here? No, maybe over here. We did um, a field trip to the zoo. No, that's not doing it either for me. And we had an overnight at the zoo. And before we, you know, ended the day and went to bed in our sleeping bags in the manatee house, um, we went to a... Um, like a bad house. Now there were other things in there, other nocturnal animals, but oh, that that kind of gave me the heebie-jeebies, knowing that there were bats flying around above my head and I probably couldn't see most of them. <laughs> but anyways, I survived, right? <laughs> Live to tell. Okay, so this is what I have so far. Oh, I like the way this little um, scrunchy stuff, the uh, metallic mesh, turned out. I'm just going to trim this off a little bit. It's okay if it's jagged. Oh, I like that. What do you think? Julie, thanks for joining us. Hi, Kiki. Okay. Oh, raining where you are, Pam. It's beautiful here, and we're going to have a nice weekend in Ohio, too, I hear. I'm going to add some of these iridescent pearls. And just so you know, these iridescent pearls go so nicely with the Halloween magic suite, or how, what is it? Magic in this night suite. But let me tell you, I have used them on so many other projects as well because they, um, because the, they are iridescent, they pick up colors from whatever you're using, which I think is really cool. So don't think you have to limit yourself to just that, just Halloween projects with these iridescent pearls. Try them out in other things as well. All right, there we have it. What do you think? What do you think? Sweet, huh? Okay, and here's my first one I made, my first square easel card. Again, it folds flat. It'll fit nicely in our standard size envelope. The finished size is four and a quarter inches square. And then you can pop it up just like that. This little raised tag holds the front easel in place so it's not moving around. Same thing here, four and, inch, four and a 
quarter inches square and it was okay to let my bats go beyond the border because they will still fit nicely inside the envelope without being crushed. And then I can pop that easel up just like that. Okay. Oh, Sharon, I'm glad you like it. Pam, you like it too. Great. Julie, I'm glad you joined us. But yes, um, feel free to jump on and uh, go back to the beginning if you missed any of the beginning. And thank you for sharing as well, Julie, and the others who shared. Um, Kiki, I'm glad you love it too. All right. Any questions about anything? And, um, oh, good. Julie, I'm so glad you're going to try it. Ladies, please, if you're watching or if you're in live or watching the replay and you make a square easel card like I've shown today, I hope that you will take a picture and post them to my Stamp and Peace VIP group. I've heard comments from other viewers as well that they really enjoy um, when the other viewers share uh, what they've made having been inspired my, by my demonstration. So know that not only do I appreciate it, there are many other people out there who appreciate it as well. And once again, a thank you to everyone who made a purchase with me um, this week or, or any time in the past, but especially this last month of our Stampin' Up! year because you helped me meet my last quarter goal for this stamp year. And um, I'm looking forward to the new Stampin' Up! year starting October 1st. And because of all of you, I will be receiving a bonus that I have you put towards the purchase of a heavy duty paper cutter. So I'm excited to go into the new year with that so I can save time on cutting paper and have more time to devote to designing and prepping for Facebook Lives, for videos, for future classes and events, and also to have more time working with my team, helping them get um, the, the most they can from their demonstratorship, no matter what they want that to be. All right, have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for following me on Stampin' Peace VIP. I hope you will continue to share what you see here and share my social media sites. Have a good weekend.